Hi everyone, welcome to Pathopulse underscore Radhika. So today's topic of discussion is going to be on thrombosis. It's going to be on thrombosis. Okay. So recently I have uh, planned to put up a video so that it covers small topics based on clinical scenarios. So if you want any topic to be discussed, you can post in the comments. Right. So now let's go to the question. A forensic expert conducted an autopsy of a suspected case of murder and during autopsy the forensic expert notes the following what does it indicate so this is the noted finding so basically you have a red part an yellow part a blood clot right what so during autopsy and this finding was observed and what does it indicate and post-mortem clot anti-mortem clot arterial thrombi venous thrombi now look at the image carefully it could be thrombus in a vein or in an artery but you should choose the most appropriate answer so what do you observe here so what do you observe here is this is basically a blood clot i hope everyone agrees with it the clot has been removed from a blood vessel so it's appearing like this so what it has got two different colors so what are the two different colors at the bottom you have a red color and on the top you have a yellow color okay so what happens this red portion is the dependent part and it is red because of the rbc's right so you have basically a dependent portion which is red and a supernatant top part which is yellow in color so this is called yellow chicken fat clot so this is called yellow chicken fat clot and where do you see this yellow chicken fat clot so this is especially seen in a post-mortem clot okay so this you should remember so whenever a clot forms in a blood vessel after the death of the patient you have a dependent red part and a supernatant yellow part so what could be the answer here the most appropriate answer so the answer here is a post-mortem clot so what do you mean by a thrombus so a thrombus is nothing but inside a blood vessel you can have a blood clot being formed it could be in the artery or in a blood vessel so thrombosis can occur due to many factors so when you you know your blood vessel is lined by endothelium your normal blood flow is laminar that means it's a smooth flow your cells will be in the center your plasma will be at the periphery so whenever this flow is reversed your blood clot can form so when can you get or what are the predisposing factors for thrombosis so you should remember this so whenever you have stasis any injury to the vessel wall or any hypercoagulable state this can predispose to thrombus formation this is what we call it as a virchow's triad so this is called as virchow's triad okay so this you should remember so what do you mean by stasis stasis means like if something is immobilized for a long time so it gets settled suppose you you put some mud in a tumbler of water what happens the mud gets settled at the bottom if you are going to leave it undisturbed likewise this is an example for stasis likewise in a blood vessel let us consider a patient who is operated in the post-op period the patient is lying on a bed for a long time is not mobilized so there will be stasis of blood in the lower limbs so that's one of the predisposing factor for deep vein thrombosis of the leg so especially venous thrombi occur due to stasis right whereas in an artery what happens let us imagine you have an atherosclerotic block over here now your blood is flowing like this so whenever your blood is going to hit this atherosclerotic block what happens there is some turbulence so because of that you can get some endothelial injury so you have an endothelial injury which predisposes to thrombus so most of the arterial thrombi are due to endothelial injury then sometimes you can have increased rbc's in your blood that's called polycythemia so that can predispose to coagulation you have so many other hypercoagulable states as well so this is just for example so what you should remember is you have something called Virchow's triad, which includes stasis, endothelial injury and hypercoagulability. Stasis is one of the important factor in venous thrombosis, whereas vessel wall injury is an important factor in arterial thrombus, right? So having discussed Virchow's triad, 
where is have you come across this name virchhausen medicine any guess so you have virchow robin spaces in the brain okay so apart from that you have something called virchow cell so what do you mean by virchow cell so you have a different spectrum of leprosy from borderline leprosy to lepromatous leprosy so whenever your immune system is functioning poorly you can have lepromatous leprosy so when you take biopsy from the skin lesion of lepromatous leprosy what happens here you have a skin which is stratified squamous epithelium in the dermis you have a lot of lot of macrophages which are studded with this acid fast bacilli right so basically if you do a fight ferroco stain so fight ferroco stain is a special stain which you can do for acid fast lepra bacilli it's a afb stain acid fast stain okay so inside the macrophages you will see a lot of lepra bacilli so this macrophage is called a globi or a virchow cell so virchow cell can be seen in lepromatous leprosy as well so so far we have discussed about virchow triad which includes stasis endothelial injury and hypercoagulability so going to the next slide what is this so i was telling about the post mortem clot where you have a yellow chicken fat appearance again then how can you identify an anti mortem clot so as i discussed in the previous video in embolism so this appears circular so this is a blood vessel inside which you have a clot so when you look it in the hyper what are you able to see so don't just think in pathological terms just tell me think in layman terms and comment what you see here you see two different layers so what are those two different layers so one appears dark the other one appears light so this dark area is because of your rbcs it's because of your red cells right whereas this light area is because of your platelets and fibrin so this alternate areas of light and dark zones laminated appearance we call it as lines of zahn so where do you get lines of zahn so lines of zahn is seen in a anti mortem clot so only when the clot is forming in the blood vessel when the blood is flowing only when you have a clot when the blood is flowing you get this laminated appearance of dark and light areas this we call it as lines of zahn so remember lines of zahn is seen in an anti mortem clot in a flowing blood whereas yellow chicken fat appearance is seen in a post mortem clot right next thing having discussed lines of zahn so many of them get confused with one other terminology which you have so what is the other one so have you heard of infarct of zahn so what do you mean by infarct of zahn so infarct of zahn is nothing but a pseudo infarction which occurs in the liver due to portal vein obstruction due to portal vein obstruction right so this is for the video today so let me summarize what we have discussed so far we have discussed about virchow triad which includes stasis hypercoagulability and endothelial injury this is the virchow triad then we have seen about anti mortem clot and post mortem clot in anti mortem clot you have something called lines of zahn in post mortem clot you have yellow chicken fat appearance okay so this is for the video today so tomorrow we will see the difference between an arterial thrombi and a venous thrombi thank you